Problem 12. Let M be the midpoint of AB in a regular tetrahedron ABCD. What is cosine of CMD? So what is a tetrahedron? A tetrahedron, well, if you didn't know this on the test, then um, that, that was a bit unlucky. But for those who did know what a tetrahedron was, it should have been four um, congruent triangles. And if it's regular, the triangle is equilateral. Now, one way to understand is that tetra is the prefix for four, and hedron is three. So four threes, that reminds you of four triangles. And then you have this shape right here. But now let's label it. A, B, C, D. One thing about labeling is they should label it in a clockwise fashion, as I did right here, or in a counterclockwise fashion. Or rather, this is counterclockwise, that's clockwise. But the, the idea here is to go in order. So with this labeled, we know that M is defined to be the midpoint of AB, so let's say that's somewhere right here. And then we have the, the cosine of angle CMD. Well, the angle of CMD is awfully reminiscent of a triangle CMD. So if I were to connect it, right, then I have a shape that looks like this. Now, how are you supposed to picture this? Because I get it that it's in 2D and it's a bit difficult to grasp your mind around it. Well, BDC, you can think of it as the base. And then I slowly raise this B point to, towards A. And every time I do this, I create this little triangle that moves its way all the way up until it becomes ACD. So that's the way you can, I picture how this might look like. Now with this, what is something special about a equilateral triangle? And the special thing about equilateral triangles is that the altitude is a perpendicular bisector. Well, that's not, that's pretty obvious, right? Because this is an isosceles triangle after all. So with this understanding, that must mean that the length of CM is a perpendicular bisector. So that must be a right angle, which means BM and MA must be the same. Now, one thing about this kind of question, where it does not tell you the side length of the shape, that means that you can scale it up and down to a side length that you want it to work with. For instance, if I have to have an equilateral triangle of 1, 1, 1, that's the same thing as an equilateral triangle of 5, 5, 5, except scale down 1 fifth. So the idea here is to give yourself side length that's easy to work with. In this case, this perpendicular bisector split BM and MA into equal parts. So I want this to be whole numbers. I don't want to work with fractions because I hate fractions. So the easiest whole number is 1. So let's call both of them 1. In that case, every single side length is the same. So BC must be 2. Now, triangle BMC is a right triangle at m. So therefore, what is the mc side length? The mc side length will just be the square root of 4 minus 1, which is root 3. So that means this would be root 3, and md would be root 3 as so. We're trying to find this angle. Well, we're given two sides in the angle. So that should remind you of one particular formula, which is the law of cosines. Now, the law of cosines states that this should be my angle, a, b, and c. Then c squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of that angle. So the angle is represented by the theta value. So if I were to have this in mind, then let's substitute each value. If I were to scroll up a bit, right, you can imagine it to be the same, um, same case, where cd, right, cd is 2. Remember, every side length is the same. So 4 is equal to a squared, which is 3, plus b squared, which is 3, minus 2 times ab, well, a, B and a and B in this case are both root 3, so that's 6 cosine theta. Now, with this, we can simplify to get 4 minus 6 is negative 6 cosine of theta. Well, we can see where this is headed, because when we simplify, we'll get our answer. The cosine of theta would therefore be equal to negative 2 over negative 6. Therefore, this would be equal to 1 over 3, bringing you to answer choice of answer choice B.